Hi everyone, it's Paul from Alexandria Knife Sharpening Laser Engraving. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make a really cute little night light for a kid using some acrylic and some inexpensive LED lights you can get on Amazon. They can run off of batteries or they can run off of a little USB uh, plug that you can either plug into a wall if you don't want to use batteries on them. And here is the simple design that I made and it just says uh, sweet dreams love Aunt Jen and Uncle Paul in a nice little arch we have our unicorn in the middle we have unicorns are real and Emma's name right here and I am going to put this on a piece of uh, acrylic that's mostly round except in the bottom where it goes into the night light and what's going to be interesting to a lot of people is I'm going to do this on a 40 watt diode laser, the S1, which a lot of people think can't engrave acrylic, but that's not entirely true. If you cover the back of the acrylic with uh, paper or with anything that's a solid color, you can engrave acrylic, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. I'm going to be using a piece of uh, fiberboard. Uh, only because I don't have any black uh, paper here at the moment, but you can use uh, black paper works great. And I would recommend running a test. I'm also going to do this entirely with scoring. I'm not going to actually engrave. I'm going to actually score it. And you'll see my settings here are power of 23 with a speed of 300. And the main thing here is going to be how you treat the acrylic afterwards and how you clean it. And I'm going to show you how to do that uh, in the best way that I know possible so that you don't mark it because acrylic is very, very sensitive to scratches. All right, so here we go. So here's my setup. I will leave you this file if you want to adjust it, change it. Uh, make a, If you have a niece that loves unicorns, uh, feel free to make your own and we'll go from there. All right. So let me stop this and we'll go to the regular camera now. So these are the lights. They come with a little remote control and a USB cable. They can also run off a battery, so you can put a battery in there. Or you can plug the uh, USB cable in and then put that into a USB uh, style charger or a wall outlet converter for a USB plug. These are... I got these for $24.99 for six of them. And that was just for the lights with the remotes. I bought the acrylic separately. You will see sets of these where they sell like three with three pieces of acrylic. But I bought my acrylic separately because I wanted to be able to run some test patterns. And if I had any screw ups, I wanted to be able to... Uh, make another one and not be without a piece of acrylic to engrave and it's through the same people I'll leave the links to to them but I was able to get six pieces of acrylic and I think they were if I remember correctly I'll check all the prices for you I think they were $9.99 and this is just a different style so this one here is a square piece of acrylic and the reason you can't see through them right now is because they have just a protective coating on them. They come packed in, you know, little bags like these. And we're going to remove that protective coating. So I have one here, and that's what we're going to do right now. And like I said, we want to handle this absolutely as little as possible. I used to do a lot of photography, and I used a lot of acrylic frames and the one problem with acrylic is it does scratch easily so you really want to be careful how you touch it what you touch it with you want very you want cleaning cloths made for acrylic they even make special sprays uh cleaners for acrylic uh it, you know when it comes to like frames for pictures and stuff so i'm just going to peel all this off as you can see just peels right off they say it's three millimeters but i actually measured it as two 
You, this is the this is probably the hardest part of this whole project is getting the uh, plastic protection sometimes off of the acrylic because I think they put it on and then cut it and it's like always like this. It's always hard to to get the little piece where you're starting it. It can also attract dust pretty easily, so you want to keep that in mind too. Now what I'm going to do is you're just going to see I'm putting it down on this piece of uh, fiberboard but I'm going to take this is just a piece of black painters tape and I'm going to tape it down because I don't want it to run any risk of moving around in here and that should be all it needs to keep it from moving around and here's what I'm I'm going to go back to my camera so we want to focus on the board not the acrylic. So normally you would put your focus marker on top of what you're engraving. We're going to come and do the board. So we want it on the board. All right. So I'm hitting my measurement. It's going to go down and take a measurement. And then reset. All right. So we have our measurement. Now we're going to mark our project. So I'm hitting start marking. I'm going to use polygon. You could probably get away with circle too. It would be fine. Um, I'm going to use polygon just, to, just so you guys can see uh, how cool this focusing system is and, and how I can take... With polygon, I can take as many measurements as I want. Okay, so unfortunately, due to a technical glitch, that little piece of film did not get recorded. So I'm just re-recording, showing you what I did, uh, even though it's already been done. Sorry about that. But I did want to include all this from both angles so you could see what I'm doing. So basically, as I move the laser around, you'll see on the computer that that little crosshair moves any place that I move this laser around. And this is how the laser marks the area that's going to be engraved since it doesn't have a camera style uh, system like some lasers do this laser has a focusing system and placement system and the focus is done by that little sh uh, bit of film we just shot the placement is done by marking and I'm going to show you so I'm going to come over here and you'll see on the right hand side I'm hitting start marking and I'm going to pick polygon but you can pick any of these uh, shapes so if you're doing a square you only need two points and it'll make a square if you need a circle you only need three points now we could do a circle here that would work fine uh, but I'm going to do polygon just so you can see it uh, and so that we can uh, get the exact kind of shape so you can see where the the shape is and also because since it could be skewed one way or another I want to get the exact shape on this. So once I send it over, which I did, now every place that I line this crosshair up, when I hit the mark button, you'll see on the computer, it just did mark one. And I can do as many of these as I want on a polygon. And I'm going to come down and I'm really interested in this part right here, which is the little tab part, because I can tell just from these marks that it's not perfectly straight up and down, which is important for where I want my design to be on the piece of acrylic. And now I'm going to come back up to the top. And that's good. I'm done. All right, so now I'm going back over. I'm going to hit end marking, and you can already see on the screen there's our outline. I'm going to click done, and it put it right on the screen. And you can see I already had the uh, drawing where I needed it to be, but I'm just going to reline it up here. So this is how you would come in and kind of put your design where you wanted it to be. Now, another cool feature is if you come down here and click framing and you come over here once I hit the button 
it's going to draw. Now it's going to do it in a square, but it's going to draw where it should be on that piece of acrylic. You can also control that by on the computer if that was too fast for you if you come down here you see these three little dots you can hit for framing see framing speed right now it's at 160 I'm gonna crank it all the way down to 80 and now watch what happens I'm gonna hit framing again and watch how much slower now it'll go a lot slower makes it a little bit easier so I like it a little slower like that so I can see now the other thing you can do is like I said the you will see the little crosshairs on your computer it's in real time moving so see the little red dot so if I just wanted to check a couple uh, points like say I wanted to see hey where's the um, tip of my unicorn's horn gonna be I could line that up on my computer and kind of look and see, okay, it's going to be right there. And if I wanted to check, say I wanted to check these two little corners here, I could just kind of bring them down here and you can see that's spot on. And come over the other side and you can see, like, it's really accurate. And that's spot on. So that's a great thing too, is that with, with that being a real-time little bullseye, you can check whatever you want on your design and layout to make sure that's right where you want it to be and that's how that works that's the uh, alignment system for placing your designs on the item that you're engraving so I hope that's helpful and uh, hopefully some of you guys got to see all those little features there like I said you can slow the the framing down uh, when it does the uh, little laser moving around so you can see where that's going to be. And that's the alignment system on the S1. All right, let's go, let's continue. So now when I hit the start button, it should start engraving. It is just about done. Three minutes and two seconds and we are finished. So I'm gonna open this up now. All right, so you'll see there's a little bit of brown on there and I'm gonna push this laser out of the way. I'm gonna peel off my piece of tape that was just holding us in place. And you'll see it went straight through so there's actually our design on the bottom. And now I'm gonna show you how we clean this up and make it perfect. So here we will go to the next part, which is just the cleaning. So here is the trick in the cleaning of the acrylic. Now, like I said, you don't wanna touch it any more than you have to. So I'm still gonna say, Handle it by the sides, and we're going to go to the side that the markings were done to, which is the back side. And what we're going to do is we are going to spray this up with some Windex. And you will see that that brown stuff that was just from the board, and if it's paper, sometimes it's stuff from the paper, is gonna start coming off. And this is just water right here. I'm gonna start spraying that off. And I'm gonna do a little bit more of this. And I will get in here with my finger and go over the letters and the engraving part. Just lightly rubbing it and trying to knock off any of that stuff that's on there. Hit it again. That's looking pretty good. Now, the one thing I found that you can touch these with that is safe 
is a Q-tip. And I just use it right on the engraving part. So on the letters, you can get in there with the Q-tip and kind of rub it. And if you see any little marks that are out just outside of the letters, sometimes you'll get a little haze. This usually takes that right off. And you'll see it come on the Q-tip. See that stuff getting on that Q-tip? So I'm just gonna go, I'm just going right in them, right in that in the score lines. I'm not gonna drift all over the place. I'm not gonna wanna, I don't wanna wipe the whole thing. I just wanna get anything out of those score lines. And I feel pretty good about that. All right, water again, just cleaning it off. Now I'm gonna hit the front side. Now here is what I like to do. And you can do this with canned air, compressed air, whatever you want. But I don't like to write light, I don't like to wipe acrylic with anything. I would rather blow it off. So I'm gonna blow this thing dry. I have compressed air in my shop, but if you have to use canned air, that's fine. But blow the water off. Don't wipe it off. You'll just trust me. Wiping acrylic is the last thing you really want to do. You don't have to. I just blow it till I get all the water out of all the little cracks and crevices. I can get that completely dry without any fingerprints, marks, smudges. And now let's go over and I'll show you the finished product and how it looks. And let me uh, let me close my computer back screen back so you can get a better look. It's all that bright color is kind of knocking it out of the way. And I'll dim uh, dim one of the room lights here a little so you can see. But look how great that looks. And you can see I can do, uh, pull a little, here's our little remote. And I can change colors by off, on, green, red, blue, purple, pink, green, yellow, Looks green to me, <laughs> blue, and there's white. White's probably the brightest, and let's see. And it does have uh, dim controls here. You can dim it if you want, or you can brighten it up. Looks like that's the brightest setting. So there it is, guys. There is your uh, night light, engraved night light, using scoring. And I hope you enjoyed that. So one other uh, cool trick I wanted to tell you guys about, if you want this to be even brighter, I haven't done it to this one, but what you can do is you can take a little bit of sandpaper and lightly go around the outside edge, and that will make the inside engraving even a little bit brighter. I don't think this one needs it. As you can see, it looks pretty good, but that is a trick that you can do to make it even brighter on the inside of your engraving. And that'll just show you a couple of the colors there. That green's nice and bright. Blue, there's white. They say that's pink, but it looks purple to me, and that's purple. Blue, yellow or orange, here's a, they say that's yellow, it looks green. <laughs> but I like the white the best. All right. So that's it. Have a great day, everyone. Okay. So I just did the uh, sandpaper scratch to this and you can see, I think you can probably see it. It looks brighter. Uh, it did a nice job of brightening that up. So that's just a little trick there. If you want to make it, uh, the engraving really bright inside. Mm -hmm.